Hello and thank you for being with me. This is today's Frankly in Five. I know I haven't done a video in a while. Um, a lot's been going on. I've been trying to get better since being out of the hospital. And uh, things are going well. I've been uh, starting a therapy session for the physical end of things and doing a lot of walking and uh, appointments and visitation. Uh, so it's just been tough for me to get a proper uh, video out. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing also my uh, finishing up the Psalms 1 Bible study also uh, tomorrow night. So you'll, for those that are following in that Bible study, that'll be on tomorrow. But today's video is actually uh, what I promised in regards to the video on my dreams. While I was in the hospital and I was under a coma, self-induced coma for about a week. And then I started coming out of the sedation. And that's when I believed that a lot of these dreams really started was when I was coming out of the coma. Maybe, I don't know. I don't remember a week's worth uh, I was out. Um, but after the sedation, when I started opening my eyes, not really remembering uh, and not really understanding what was going on, uh, I was in and out. I was in and out of reality and my dreams. And I had a lot of them. And a lot of them are kind of bizarre. Um, but I'm going to share them with you, and I'm going to share them in segments. So in other words, I'm going to have a part one, a part two, and a part three. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I believe I've learned through the process uh, to share with you guys. Um, I'm hoping you're seeing my chickens behind me. Uh, they, they are doing well. Um, we did have one last night caught by a fox. We spotted him, and... Uh, he was coming back for more, and we were out here with flashlights, and we spotted his eyes and uh, chased him off. Uh, we're going to have to do something in regards to the fox, and I'll figure it out. I'll share it with you later. Um, but the chickens are pr pretty much doing well. The doves are doing well. The ducks are doing well. There's one male and four females uh, in the ducks, and so that one male is a happy male. And uh, so they're doing great, and I just want to just thank you all for being a part of this sticking with me through the process i know it's been a while i know this was a big shake up uh, in regards to my tom hanks videos it stopped at video 39 because of the what happened to me uh, i will continue um that is the part of the process i have to do 40 and um and also my cat's scratching at my door, and so he's going to get himself in trouble. <laughs> Someone's going to let him out. Um, anyway, uh, the videos uh, about Tom Hanks, you know, it's obviously you know, uh, if you watch the other videos regarding Tom Hanks, it's more than Tom Hanks. It's bigger than that. This is a global thing that's going on. It's involved a lot of different people. Our focus has been Tom Hanks because he's a big name, and uh, he was actually... Um, and things happened to him in the beginning uh, more than anybody else. And it was actually a friend of mine who's, who wouldn't believe me that things were taking place. And so I said, well, let's focus on one thing. And, he, and so we said, okay, let's pick something to focus on. And he said, well, why don't we focus on Tom Hanks? If you're saying is true about what's going on in the world and what's going on with him, then he, we will know pretty much uh, by what happens in history as things take place. So that's how that all started. I mean, Tom Hanks missing with that first video was for my friend and for those that I talked to uh, and who um, really didn't know what to think. They kind of thought I was going crazy. And as we worked the process of all together, uh, worked it out and looked and investigated, and, you know, even I was really not knowing exactly what was going on, just knowing by just kind of common sense and, and watching what was taking place in the world, something was wrong and something was wrong with Tom Hanks. So we kind of went through this together. And uh, so we're going to get back to that. It's not going to be completely focused on him. I might do uh, another video or two on him uh, as information comes forth. But there are other things that are actually bigger. And we're going we're gonna to talk about those things. Uh, we're going to talk about the election. Believe it or not, the election, it's all about that. It's all about the election. It's all about uh, what's going to transpire in, in a couple of months and even directly after. 
that's going to affect all of us. So I think the focus after Tom Hanks is going to be on that. I hope you stick with me. Uh, the Tom Hanks videos will be up for others that are still searching for the truth. And uh, well, anyway, I know I'm taking a long time with this introduction. I just wanted just to say hello and thank you. Thank you for all the Patreon uh, members that have stuck with me and all those that have been donating to the PayPal. Uh, you are such a blessing. Um, you don't realize uh, being in a hospital that long and knowing what, what hospital bills were coming, <laughs> um, I had no clue. Uh, I thank God for it all because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those people that were uh, taking care of me. But, um, but yes, there is a price to pay in regards to financial, the financial end of things, which I, I, I know God will take care of that. But you have been a, played a great part in helping my family uh, cope through this with your financial gifts. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, they're greatly appreciated. Now, with my dreams, I'm going to start this video up with a part one. The dreams, when I started having them, they weren't bad and they weren't they were never scary um, I in my dreams I was never afraid um, I, I, I'm a believer in Christ and, and believe it or not through the process while in my dreams I wanted to go home I wanted to go home I wanted to leave this earth and go to the other side it was like I was searching to do that now in part one of this video it wasn't um, I didn't hit that stage yet. I really didn't know what was going on. And it wasn't until part two in my dreams that I started saying to myself and those around me, listen, I want to go home. So the part one was really an interesting. It was almost like me trying to understand what was happening, what was going on while in a dream state and also in the reality of what was going on um, in in my room, in my uh, where I was, I don't remember um, a lot of what was happening in my room. In reality, I remember my dreams. I remember taking what I was, if I did open my eyes, what was in front of me, and pulling them into my dreams, pulling them into a, um, the. I'm not going to say a delusion. It was reality to me. Uh, what was I, what I was going through? And when I have dreamed before, I was, I'm pretty much a lucid dreamer. It's a dreamer that where you know you're in a dream, and you can almost control it. You can almost say, "I know I'm in a dream, so if there's something that I need to do, I, I can do it." It's almost like you like looking at your dream, and you're able to control what's going on. These dreams, I did not have any control. These dreams, I thought were real. Uh, a lot of what was going on. Uh, I, I, I didn't think was fake and I thought really everything that I was doing was reality and so these are the dreams I'm going to share with you I wrote out my dream because I didn't want to forget some of the things that I went through so I'm going to read these to you and I'm going to also share the some pictures that might help represent what I was seeing with you in this video and you'll see the pictures go up as I as I talk and as I read to you my dreams um, so this is a part one. This is me trying to figure out what was happening to me. Okay? And so let me just start. Uh, so here we go. This is, this is the first thing I began to remember while dreaming. While in the hospital, I must, must have gone into, I must have gone to have an MRI done. Okay? In my dreams, there were four Asian girls. Now, a lot of the things in my dreams had a lot to do with Southeast Asia and Asian, the Asian culture. I have, no re I have no clue why, but they played a great part. And maybe it's because of the technology in my dreams that I dreamt about. Um, I'm not sure, but, but I, I dreamt a lot about Asian people and being in Asian places, okay? So in my dreams, there were four Asian girls running this, M it's almost like a, an MRI that was an experiment MRI because the girls came into my room the MRI was not scheduled for that day so they came in and asked for, for me to go and get asked my permission to take me where they wanted to take me to get this MRI done and so I agreed to it my wife was there my wife was not allowed to go with me so I went by myself the girls took me but they took me around down these back hallways 
and uh, through skinny hallways, all four girls, very nice, very nice girls, but they had, it was almost like they were on a mission. It was almost like they were scientific, you know, sci it was a scientific thing. They took me to this room and it was just a large black circle. Like an, you would, if you saw an MRI before, you would put your whole body in, it's round, it makes lots of noise. But this was just for my head. My head would be the, what would go into this, and so my body would be out of it, and my head was in this thing, okay? And even though it was not approved, this MRI, uh, as of yet, it was a part of it was a part of the hospital that was down a quarter, not usually um, where people would go, and it, the MRI unit looked round and black. My head went inside. Uh, the girls were very nice, but I felt as if this was more than and then an experiment um, than the usual MRI test. The machine made loud noises when it went on, and it went on for at least 15 minutes. I felt my head, weird things in my head, uh, but when it was over, they said that I did very well and secretly returned me to my room. Um, in that section, I was actually in a hospital, and while I was in the machine, I could think, the MRI, I could think, and I was wondering what was taking place, and it was a long time, a lot of noise. Um, and so when I came out, what took place after that, this is when my dreams started to go places. And I have come back, you're going to see in part two, where I'm going to come back to this MRI test because I saw and did things that I didn't think I had the, the power or the possibility to do. And I attributed it to what took place in that MRI. Uh, okay, so that you'll see in part two. Um, so when they, when I went back to my room, I woke up, but in a different place. Okay, I woke up at a military base. Okay, somewhere in Southeast Asia, the ground was sand and the walls were bamboo. It was like I was in. Uh, it was a U.S. military, almost like a Guam or like um, the Philippines or, or someplace like that. And, but I was on a base where the ground was sand, and, but yet I was in a medical facility, okay? I was in a room with others listed in a row of five. I couldn't see them as we were all laying down. I could only see the left side of another man in worse condition than myself. I, could see, I couldn't see the ones on my right. We all had different conditions, and I was wearing a military-grade helmet that I couldn't talk well in, but I could breathe. It was almost like a giant military CPAP. If you know what a CPAP is, it's something you put on your face to help you breathe. And so this it was almost like a helmet made so that I can breathe, but it was very difficult to get off. Okay. Um, I tried to get it off while the staff, okay, my goal was to get out of the CPAP helmet. And I tried to rip the thing off, I tried to break it apart. I, I eventually, this, this took a while to do, and while I was doing it, it set an alarm off for those that were taking care of me, and instead of stopping me, they all watched to see how far I would get, almost like they were like, what is this guy doing? And like I said, it was in a military base, so they were in another room with the door open where we had all the people there, and and I, t I got it off, I broke it open where I could at least speak. And, but yet I got stuck in my head in a way that I couldn't, I couldn't get it off. And I finally had one of the military doctors come up to me and kind of reprimand me and say, you know, if you had just left it alone, you wouldn't be in this situation. Um, now, in reality, in what was going on after the coma, I had a thing stuck to my head. It was actually glued to my head. And I might show a picture of it so you can see it. And... I don't know if in reality I was trying to pull that off. Maybe I felt as if, if there was a helmet on me or not. Uh, when I started waking up, uh, in reality, I started pulling all my IVs out. I started pulling IVs out. I started pull, pulling the tubes out of my mouth, where they had to sedate me to get me <laughs> to get me to stop doing it and put mitt, mittens on my hands. This was happening in the beginning of me trying to come out of it. And even though it was tough for them because I was doing all these things I shouldn't be doing, they were actually excited because, because I was awake. 
I, I knew what was going on, and I, um, they saw that what was happening uh, in reality was that I was coming out of this, and I knew what I was doing. When they told me to stop, I did stop. Um, but they had to put mittens on me too because I kept going back and forth into this dream state of almost like a delirium where I was pulling information from the reality into a dream state. Now, what was neat was what happened after that, okay? Uh, let's see. I broke it into pieces and got my head stuck in the last piece and an annoyed officer fixed it and reprimanded me. I asked them to use my cell phone to call my wife with no avail as I thought we were in another country and she couldn't be reached. I fell asleep again. I woke up in the same place and it was at that moment a special treat was given to those who were sick. A special show that was displayed that displayed paper houses of many beautiful colors. The show engulfed the front of the room all the way to the floor and at my feet, okay, and on both sides of the room, slowly and methodically coming together like a puzzle displaying small people inside them. It was very oriental, okay. I knew that this was something that the people who lived there did as a way to express their care for us. Um, in other words, they they did a like a show for us to help us just help us get our minds off our illness. And it was absolutely beautiful. It came in from both sides of the room, very slowly, but yet pieced together. We couldn't see the people doing it as they were behind everything. We just saw the structures and the color and the paper houses. It was, it was abs actually absolutely amazing. Slowly and methodically coming together like a puzzle displaying small people inside them. I knew that this was something that the people uh, did as a way to express their care for us. The paper houses were layered, three-dimensional, and engulfed the room. It was so beautiful and calming. I talked with them and thanked them, even though I couldn't see them, as they were doing this display from hidden places. They didn't speak back. Everything looked as if it was floating. But I knew that there were those manipulating the set. Very coordinated and very well done. This lasted about 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes. When it was over, I was transported or woke up in a home that was a doctor's personal home. So in other words, I went, I thanked them, and I fell back asleep. When I woke up, one of the military doctors that were there, I ended up being in his home in this Asian country, and he was married to uh, an Asian doctor, uh, a woman who was an Asian doctor. And in other words, I was a, kind of like a special case that they had to keep closer eye on me because I kept breaking things and ripping things off. So they brought me into their home, almost like a guest room, okay? So let me read it. When, I was, when it was over, I, I, I was transported or woke up in a home that was the doctor's personal home. He was married to a native, a doctor, and they wanted to try to treat me under their full supervision. I was in a, uh, in a room lying on a bed. I was always laying down. In my dreams, if I was vertical, I was strapped in. You're going to see that in part two or partly in part two. I might share a little in this part one. But I was always strapped in at vertical. Otherwise, I was laying down. The room was oriental, and I could see amazing pets. Uh, like there was a, a doorway where I could see, like, their kitchen. And they, like, lived their life. While I was in this room, the door was open, and I could see, like, pets walking through, children walking through. In other words, they were living a normal life, okay? Large cats would come into my room, like, like oriental cats. I tried to remove the wires or IVs connected to me carefully not to disturb them. Uh, it didn't work and I was caught and reprimanded. It was their personal home and I was like in a giant guest room. The children in the home wanted to meet me but they were not allowed. I fell asleep and woke up in these, with these in interesting gifts throughout the room as the kids would make things and like sneak in when I was sleeping and display them for me to help me feel, it made me feel good. Um, colorful items again I thought it was just so nice I saw on a wall tape uh, there were two balloons now the two balloons I'm going to tell you about were with me throughout the whole dream the whole delirium I would say the whole experience of my dreams and these balloons were not good balloons 
There's a white one and there was a black one. And in every place that I went, these balloons were attached to the wall. I didn't understand in the beginning when I first saw them that they would mean more until, until later on. And I'll explain those later on. Okay. Um, they tried to cure me, but nothing worked. And they were getting frustrated. So I was also frustrated and um, with them. And they were getting frustrated with me. The man being a military doctor and his wife, an older Asian woman, courteous to take me into their home, but frustrated with the diagnosis and condition not getting better. Uh, this, these were the early visions in my dream. I never felt as if people were going to hurt me or they were being mean to me or give, you know, they weren't going to harm me. They wanted to help, but I couldn't be helped at that point. They kept asking me if I knew where I was. I answered an Asian country that had a U.S. military base. I fell asleep and woke up in what I thought was China. Okay, So I went from this military base, I fell asleep, and I woke up. Now, when I woke up, this is that vertical, when I felt as if I was in a vertical case, a vertical glass case. Okay, So in other words, it's like a box, but it was all glass. I was standing up, and I was strapped in so I couldn't move. But I could see out of the glass and people could see in. Okay? And I was outside at this point. I was in the streets. And when I say I was in China, is because, like I do in my videos, how I investigate, and I look at all the little things, I was doing that in this dream. I was looking at everything. And I saw the license plates and I saw people. And I, and I kind of figured, well, I definitely was in a different place. Not that I was in a city. And um, let me read what I wrote. The country had a U, uh, U.S. military base, but underground, okay? Um, the people could see me in this glass case, and I could see out. I could see them. I was strapped to the back wall of it. We were on the streets of a city that I thought was China, in China, and I was, I was on a crate being pulled by a vehicle. We were stationary, and I could see the street and vehicles, I was up high on the crate being pulled to a location that had a sidewalk elevator shaft. I don't know if you've ever been in New York City. They have these um, plates that open up and there's like elevator shafts. So if, if you have a store, you can put supplies on and you can have the elevator shaft will go up and down. I was felt as if I was on top of one of those waiting. Okay. Um, like you see in New York City, those elevator shafts. The vehicle uh, was pulling me but then stopped. And I was on display, to, you know, for all to see until the elevator slowly went down. It was about an hour of me being outside. I checked all the signs and license plates, trying to figure out where I was. I figured China and, uh, was brought to a hidden facility under the ground. And then I fell asleep again. I woke up in, this, in that glass case. But I was, in a, I was in a hallway with a large machine along the walls. A really large black fancy CPAP. Okay, so in other words, they had a helmet on me first. I broke the thing off. I got stuck in my face. They kind of like I was still on. So instead, they took it off, probably while I was sleeping, and they brought me to this hallway where there was this giant CPAP machine. It was an Asian country. I saw Asian people working it. I was still in that glass case, and they connected that machine to the glass case. Okay. Um, I thought this was over the top, and what uh, what was I supposed to do? Uh, Asian philosophy, um, Asian people worked on it uh, as I was in this glass display case, still vertical. I told them that it wouldn't work, and they ignored me and tried anyway. I couldn't get out of the case and began to think something wasn't right, as if I was an experiment and I needed to get out. They eventually gave up, okay? I saw their frustration, and then I fell asleep again. Now I woke up in a transport, okay? This transport was a military helicopter. It was a helicopter like of the battle kind, almost like you would see where they have weapons on it. Not like a transport military helicopter. It was more like a fighting helicopter, okay? Now, um, I was strapped to a seat, but couldn't see out, the, uh, and I could see out the window. And I was in like almost like a desert area with a lot of military equipment on the ground, tanks, um, hills and mountains, rocky areas, almost like you would see in pictures of uh, Afghanistan, 
Okay. Uh, lots of noise outside and people talking, both male and female soldiers. It, it was an American base. I watched in amazement and I realized I was being transported back to the States in a way that was secret. Okay. Um, I had someone next to me that was not moving. I heard a, a, a female voice. It was an African-American voice uh, of a female. She was in the military. This was her chopper. In other words, this was her military transport. She was a, a pilot. Okay. And she, when she came in, she realized that there was something in her chopper, myself and this person I had thought was next to me. Okay. She pulled her handgun and approached from behind cautiously. I was awake, but I was strapped down in this helicopter. Before she came on board, I did, did realize I had wires connected to me, connected to a small monitor in a box. The wires were uh, taped to the wall as if it was a bomb that would be detonated if I tried to get up. So I stayed in the seat, strapped in, okay? The interesting part of this was the same two balloons, the black and the white balloons, were there, taped to the wall also, as if to say this was part of something bigger, as if to say there's this one group that's in control of me being in the situation that I'm in. When the girl came around the corner, okay, actually it says, the pilot was now in front of me with the pistol. I slowly and quietly pointed to the monitor and box. She called for she called for help and they dismantled the unit that I thought would detonate. It did not. It ended up being just a monitoring display for my vitals. Okay. At least that's what they told me. I thought I was in Afghanistan or a place like it. The body next to me ended up being an empty tan bodysuit that was set up to just look like a person was next to me. I fell asleep waiting for additional help. Uh, it was revealed to me that we didn't blow up, and I was thinking to the extent that people, what would people go to this great extent to kind of like secretly get rid of me, not killing me? It was then I started to think that something was really wrong, and I was a part of something secretive and top secret. They were trying to get me back to the States, BIA, the military, quietly. I woke up to a doctor on the chopper being um, with the side door being opened and I was led directly into a hospital unit and I, I came to the thought I said why are they going to such great extent to take me out of that that military base that I saw mountains and to actually the door opening on the side and me going into a military hospital I didn't know and I didn't understand okay these were things really got bizarre, and I knew I wasn't going to leave this new facility. I felt as if I was in the last destination that I would be in. And this is when things started turning south. This is when I started really dreaming that things were wrong and how I wanted to control my destination, being in a place and in that location. Now, I'm not going to share with you where I thought I was at that point. I'm going to shave that, share that for part two. But this was part one of my dreams. And to tell you the truth, I really don't know what they mean. I, 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 I learned a lot of things at the end. I'm going to share with you a little bit of the things that I've learned at the end in part three. And a lot of them had to do with me personally. A lot of good was shown to me in the beginning. And a, and a lot of... Um, Bad things started were about to take place. Part two will have those those things uh, that I experienced that were not so good, and my fight and my battle in this hospital, in this military hospital unit that was in a location, not China, not Afghanistan, not Guam or the Philippines, but in a new location. And so I'll share that uh, in the second video. Uh, it's amazing what our brains, our minds will do. These are the, the probably the most real dreams I've ever have, have ever had. My wife tells me her dreams are very realistic, and, and as if she's really having them, thinking that she's in a, in a certain place. I've never had these type of dreams before. This is the first time, 
and I know that I was probably going in and out of sedation. So I was pulling information in. But it is so amazing that our minds can create a story. I thought I was someplace else. And yet there were people that were taking care of me every day. There were machines that were connected to me that were keeping me alive. And yet I did not know that. And if anything, I started to fight it. And so, okay, I hope that this wasn't too boring for you. Uh, the, people have asked me my experience, what I was dreaming. And so that's why I'm sharing this with you. It's frankly in five, obviously, it's frankly or five and more because the video is, is going, obviously, it's going to last longer because I'm going to share with you um, these dreams. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being a part of this and with my chickens. Uh, thank you for your prayers. I thank you that you have shared with my wife and have treated her with such respect as she's a very private person and I, in a million years, never would have thought that she would have put videos out to share the experience. As many of you were asking where I was, many of you were sharing your prayers uh, that you were praying for me, asking questions, what happened to Frank? And yet in this time, my wife broke out and she shared the videos and I listened to the video. She hasn't listened to her videos ever. <laughs> she won't. But I listened to them and I was touched. And um, I was touched by not just her, but all of you. Um, it's, still, it's still very emotional to me. And it's hard for me to talk about and express the love that was shown to me by thousands of people who I don't, I don't know in all these different countries all over the world. I had, had never figured that a, a YouTube channel could go that far. And I never really started it for me. I started it for my friends to come to know the truth. And in that, a community was built. Friendships were made. I remember I received gifts. I've received... Um, I've received this fella, David, uh, sent me some salt water taffy from Maine. Um, I've received uh, things in the mail from gifts from people, financial gifts. So many people reached out, and I'm talking generous, really generous gifts, that um, where I would struggle to help pay my hospital bills, um, these people have stepped forward to help me and ease the pain of that. Who would have thought? And uh, so I still, I want to end this video with a thank you and a God bless. Part two of my dreams will be coming soon. Thank you for being with me. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, God bless and uh, have a good evening.